Hello and welcome back to Sunrider Liberation Day Return. The other shields looked on in horrified disbelief. Ch Chikara? What have you done to her? Done? She's been under my control since she joined the ship. Everything was done so we could control you. And how easy it was to convince you that this little doll loved you. <laughs> we had you eating out of our hands practically your entire voyage. If the Wanderer hadn't interfered, then I would have... The other shield's eyes twitched. Then, I've been... All this time, everyone else was right. Open your eyes, shields. I'm you from the future. I've come to warn you about Chigara. Um, impossible. The other shields held himself up against the tactical map. <laughs> if you can't spark an intergalactic war, I'll just have to be satisfied with seeing the look on your face when your ship sinks. The Nightmare Ascendant's flyer drones detached and screened towards the Sunrider. Captain! I'm taking command. Return fire! Aye aye! Get in contact with Fontana. How much longer until his ships are functional? H holy The Blackjack sprang back into action and sprayed fire on the drones as they whizzed past. Huh! <laughs> you see? I told you guys Chigara was up to no good. Didn't think you guys would actually believe me though. Huh, <laughs> you have our new captain to thank for that. Claude, how are things over there? Ooh, I finished restoring power to the Bianca, and the grav gun shot through. <laughs> Aside from that, it looks like I've wandered into something really interesting. Shields gripped the tactical map as the Sunrider took fire. The Ascendant's defences are too good. Without Chigaro's ECM, nothing we have is going to get through. <sighs> My ships are still not operational. Could still be another 20 minutes. You're going to have to hurry it up. A nearby Alliance cruiser took a hit through its central tower from a fly drone's laser and began to list towards the Sunrider. Hard to port! Everyone braced themselves as the Sunrider had narrowly avoided colliding into the crippled cruiser. We might be dead in ten minutes! The Sunrider's side thrusters stopped firing, allowing everyone to regain their footing. Seraphim locked on, dispensing fire. Ha! <laughs> Pathetic! Alice's eyes ignited in a blue fireball as Solder rained down judgment. The Ascendant swung its sword and deflected each of Solder's rounds. As long as Shah Marine's ghost courses through my veins, I am invincible! Tch. Defiler. The Ascendant returned fire, suppressing the Seraphim. Solar hit the thrusters, narrowly avoiding getting sliced by particle fire. Hiya! Ikari used the opening to lunge at the Ascendant's reactor cores on its back. The Ascendant spun to meet the Phoenix's katana with its greatsword. Hey! Ha! The Ascendant shoved the Phoenix away as if it were but a child. With another swing, their blades met. Ikari's eyes widened when the Phoenix's katana shattered like glass against the Ascendant's blade. Shit! The Phoenix dived, narrowly avoiding getting sliced in half. I'm your opponent! Ha! The Paladin scored inbound and slugged round after round of black iron from its back mounted cannons. Ha! The Ascendant spun, dodging the rounds and lazily sliced the last round of its off just to show off its prowess. We're gonna need options, Cap! This thing's not gonna go down easy! Ha! As if to answer Akari's call, Osaga appeared, both eyes blazing with light. You're not the Shah! The Blackjack and Ascendant met and Shields wrecked his head for a way to take the Ascendant down. Last time I had all Fontana's ships helping me out. The combined fleet's already stretched thin as it is against the rest of the packed Loyalist fleet. Sunrider's comp crackled to life. This is the Sarah Underground Resistance. We've got our hands on some gunboats and are ready to assist. Resistance? Before he could respond, a swarm of 20 gunboats buzzed past the Sunrider and sprayed fire in the Ascendant. Pah! Mere flies! We'll distract her! Hit it with everything you've got! Load all torpedo tubes! Sir! Everyone hit the Ascendant with everything you've got! Understood! All of the Sunrider's riders loosed airborne ordnance on the Ascendant, revolving in a circle around it. The gunboat strafed the Ascendant, unleashing a torrent of lead as they flew by, and for a moment the Ascendant was completely enveloped by fire as round after round of ammo struck it without pause. Fire quantum torpedoes! A pair of torpedoes escaped from the belly of the ship and made their way to the Ascendant. Shield held his breath as they slowly cut through the battlefield. Both pairs struck home, blossoming into two micro-black holes. Sparks of energy shot from where the Ascendant once stood, as everything nearby was crushed when the warheads detonated. <laughs> Did that get it? Shield's hope flickered out when the Ascendant emerged completely untouched. Ha! <laughs> you thought your toys would affect the Nightmare Ascendant? Shit. Now, witness despair! The Ascendant's shoulder missile racks open, spreading a tidal wave of fire from the accursed mech. Shields gripped onto the tactical table as the Sunrider shook. The entire space around the ship transformed into a sea of fire as each missile spit more missiles and detonated. The Serent gunboats were nearly as well armoured as the Sunrider. 
and Shields looked on helplessly as all 20 heroic gunboats instantly melted away. The system exploded one by one and they spun wildly out of control and vanished into twisting debris. No! Ha 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 The Ascendant fired its particle gun, catching the Seraphim's rifle. Ah! The rifle and the Seraphim's backup reactors burst, sending it spiralling out of control. Ah. Solar! You've still failed, Shields! All your friends will still die, because the Nightmare Ascendant is indestructible! Like hell it is! The Blackjack rushed towards the Ascendant. <laughs> the Ascendant swung its sword quicker than the human eye could perceive. <laughs> Isara looked on in disbelief as the Blackjack's shoulder particle guns flew away, sliced clean from the rider's body. Before the Jack Blackjack could move, the Ascendant gripped its head with its clawed gauntlets. How does it feel to be defeated, Shah of Ruvia? <laughs> you will never awaken to the fullest extent I have, unless you have tasted true despair. You couldn't even begin to call me human anymore. <laughs> I was never human to begin with. I was a monster from the instant I was born, and that's all that awaits. You've tasted it. What lies at the end of your awakenings? Shut up! He sent it through the blackjack away, detaching the headpiece in the process. Ah! The saga's cockpit went dark as all his onboard optics failed. No! Is it really hopeless? And just then, a squad of twelve Alliance battleships appeared from all directions, surrounding the Ascendant. I apologise for our late appearance, Captain, but we'll let my men deal with this abomination. Admiral? Alice only sneered hungrily at the newest entries. Useless! Swarms of Alliance infantry riders approached in twelve columns, surrounding the Ascendant. Ha! Ha! The Ascendant's reactors glowed bright red as all three reactors fed maximum power to the particle gun. A torrent of crimson death shot from the gun, spearing the infantry after infantry, the beam never losing strength no matter the distance or number of riders maimed. The Ascendant swung the gun in an arc, hammer spearing hundreds of enemy riders and splitting an Alliance battleship into two halves. Shields stood wordlessly over a hundred Alliance riders and a battleship fell in a heartbeat. The Machiavellis opened fire using their main guns, the Ascendant dodged each shot. It was bombed again and again with missiles, but each explosion bounced harmlessly off its armour. With another swing of its particle gun, a hundred more riders and two more battleships vanished. No. Ha! Phoenix rising from the ashes! The Phoenix launched from the hangar with a new katana and flew to the Ascendant. Ikari! It's been a wild ride, Cap. But someone's got to save all our asses. Ha! Sweat poured down Shield's back, drenching his uniform as Ikari made her one-woman charge towards the Ascendant. The Phoenix drew both blades as it shot forwards at maximum speed. Ha! This is the end! The Ascendant took off, greatsword in hand, and flew towards the Phoenix at even greater speed. And Shields could only stand as the two riders screamed towards each other, blades at the ready. <laughs> ah! One cut, one kill! The two riders flew past each other, their blades moving quicker than anyone could see. And for a moment the silence fell on the battlefield as both riders came to a stop. <laughs> The phoenix's wing thrusters broke apart and one of its legs exploded. Ah! The ascendant turned round completely unharmed and slowly flew towards the phoenix. Now do you see? The ascendant is immortal! The ascendant is God! It raised its sword to deliver the coup de grace, but was tackled away by the paladin. Ah! Soldier boy! I would not let you harm the mercenary! No! Don't you! A warrior does not fear death when her comrades are in danger! Now face me, worm! The paladin banged its rifle against its shield and faced the ascendant. <laughs> What's a slow rider like that going to do against the ascendant? The paladin took cover behind its shield as the ascendant swung its sword downwards, only to have its shield be split in half. No! <laughs> the paladin stuck its rifle into wherever the ascendant's cockpit block was located and unloaded at point blank range. All it received for its efforts was a kick to the gut after the rifle's rounds bounced harmlessly off to the ascendant's armour. Now, say goodbye to your friend. The Ascendant raised its sword over the Paladin. Ah! Kreska! The Phoenix attempted to fly to the Paladin's aid, but its remaining wing thrusters blew and spluttered to death. No, no, it can't end like this. <sighs> Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> Any last words? A soldier's death is nothing to be ashamed of. Good words. As expected from a loyal soldier of the Alliance fleet. Now... Meet your end! The Ascendant swung its sword down on the co Paladin's cockpit block, but it was caught off guard when it was hit with a kinetic slug which bounced off its head. The Ascendant unintentionally gave Krisker a momentary reprieve as it sought to find the source of the insult. 
What manner of imbecile dares to interrupt? Ha! Ah! The Bianca stood alone, only a shotgun at its side, its grav gun completely busted. You! I may be good for nothing but comic relief, but today, today, Claude will stop you! <laughs> you! Without your powers you are nothing! And you can't use them right now, can you? Not without ending history as we know it. That may be so, but I'll still stop you! There's nothing in our arsenal which could match that god! God, God, GOD! Psst! Other Claude, are you there? Just then, a second Claude materialised beside Shields. Yes, interstellar goddess Claude Trilio, at your service. I thought you couldn't show yourself in front of your other self. Uh, sorry, that was actually a lie. <laughs> I just wanted to avoid any situations where I might be forced to use my powers to directly change the timeline. Well, um, I need you to use your powers, now. That's honestly the only way we're going to take that nightmare down. Captain, how many times must I warn you? The consequences of recklessly using my powers are too dire for most human brains to even comprehend. Looky here, I can get away with just one or two universes collapsing if I get someone else to do the dirty work for me. But if I were to directly cause a time paradox using the temporal manipulator... I guess even I don't know what would happen. Look, this is an emergency. If you don't do something, everyone is going to die here. Just then, the Ascendant shot the Bianca's already damaged grav gun off with its particle gun, toying with it. Ah! I think I'll make your death slow. Look, your other self is going to die too. Wouldn't that cause problems for you too? Ah, don't worry too much. I'm sure she'll be fine. A little explosion and depressurization's kind of old hat by now. Shields put his hand on to Clutel's shoulders. Claude, I'm, I'm begging you. I can't. I can't watch everyone die again. Not when we've come this far. Please. He knelt down to his knees and dug his nose to the floor, truly desperate. Goddess, please, save us from defeat. He put his hands together in prayer. Please, bring us victory. Save my crew. Save my girls. I'll, I'll do anything, anything. Ah, well, if you put it like that, uh, I guess. Claude awkwardly laughed. All right, but I'm actually not the one you need to convince here. It's that one. She pointed towards the other claw, desperately fighting against the nightmare ascendant on the Bianca. Open a channel with her, and just tell her this. Claude whispered a few words in Shield's ears. <coughs> Is she? <laughs> just say that secret phrase and voila, everyone will be saved. Holy shit. But to actually do this, th this could truly be the end. I don't have a choice, I'm going to have to do this. <sighs> Shields put his hand on the console, and opened a channel with the Bianca. Okay, what's he got to say to her? It's probably going to be something perverse. Claude, this is Kato. Huh? Captain? I I'm sorry, I'm kind of busy. I've got something re really important to tell you. Huh? You've got to defeat the Nightmare Ascendant. Because when you get back... I knew that was going to be the line. Or something along those lines. Mm. I'm going to redo that last line just so I can get the uh, the right sense of gravitas to it. And I'm going to take a drink. And I'm going to close the window. Because the bin men are outside and I don't want to yell this as loud as I think I need to. There we go. Because, because when you get back, we are going to fuck all night long. The entire bridge crew nearly collapsed in dismay. Ava faced him while gripping a speakerphone in her hand in the middle of coordinating damage control efforts. And the speakerphone shattered in her grip. The protestations of the other girls flooded the channel. Huh? What the hell is this, Captain? You you idiot! I can't believe you'd actually make a joke like that right now. D disgraceful Captain, this violates so many protocols. But soon another voice flooded out all the protests. <laughs> As you command, Captain! Claude? She's gonna do it. Today, Claude is different. What? But... <laughs> Sorry, but uh, my man says I'm taking you out. <clears throat> For the first time during the battle, fear appeared in Alice's eyes. Fear that she was now facing an opponent far greater than even the Ascendant. The Ascendant raised its particle rifle and opened fire on the Bianca. But the Bianca dematerialized before the particles reached it. Before anyone knew what had happened, it rematerialized behind the Ascendant. 
Shots rang out from its shotgun, quicker than an assault rifle. Everyone stared in disbelief as the shotgun dispensed slug after slug, quicker than a minigun. No sign of strain or overheating. Ah! The ascendant spun and sliced the space where the Bianca occupied with its sword, but it once again vanished and rematerialized, this time in front. More slugs sprayed the Bianca's shotgun in a massive brrrt. Alice swung the Ascendant's blade around wildly, but from Claude's perception, the blade moved slower than a sloth. In fact, she was firing a shotgun at it at a natural pace, but from everyone else's perspective, it appeared as if everything was happening a thousand times quicker. God or not! Those slugs cannot penetrate my armor! Aha! Uh -huh. I hope you're not thinking this is the only thing I can do! Suddenly, a second Bianca appeared, and the two of them blinked in and out around the Ascendant, spraying it with lead. What? Impo- the clone was merely a precursor of what was to come. A stream of Biancas emerged and surrounded the Ascendant. Tens, hundreds of Biancas materialized and circled around the Ascendant, spraying it with a stream of lead. Stopping and slowing down time's not the only thing I can do, you know. I can jump backwards to create an unlimited amount of copies of myself. <laughs> Isn't it time we put an end to this show? All of the Biancas activated their grav guns. Ah, oh, by the way, I spent the past month repairing my grav gun. Of course, nobody else noticed because time was frozen for everyone during this span. The Nightmare Ascendant froze in place, its limbs outstretched, as, if they were, as they were pulled apart by the strength of a hundred Biancas. You! Monster! <laughs> Isn't it a little hypocritical for you to be calling me that? Now, it's over. An enormous time rift opened above the Ascendant. A massive chunk of mantled rock flew out, directed by the gravity eddies of a thousand Biancas. The cheerfully chanting of a thousand Claudes echoed through the channel as they heaved the molten mountain towards the Ascendant. They sent it hurtling towards the Nightmare Ascendant. Alice could only stammer in panic as the massive mountain of magma headed towards her. What? No! You can't do this! If you do this, the space-time continuum will... Mm. Oh, you certainly have a point about that. Ah well, who cares about a boring thing like that, if it means I can have the captain all to myself? You're insane! The pot doth calleth the kettle black. The Nightmare Ascendant vanished in a bright light, flash of light as it smashed against the mantled rock and sank deep within its core. Even if it somehow survived within, it would be encrusted in a solid stone once the asteroid cooled. It was a burial mound from which Alice could never emerge. Shields and the entire bridge crew stared in disbelief. They had just witnessed something beyond the comprehension of humans. Just then, the entire universe began to fade to white. Whoops! Can't let this happen so soon! Shield's consciousness faded as his world unraveled. Was this the right decision? I have no idea what's going to happen now. The universe as we know it will cease to exist. And I'm going to have to censor that. Sorry about that, guys. There, there will be a black box on your screen right now. Apologies, but apparently YouTube has this thing about boobs, and it's stupid. Again. You know, because I maintain if I... You know, if you're allowed to show male nipples, I've never understood why female nipples are considered out of bounds, but, oh well. <laughs> Claude emerged beside Shields, in the great white nothingness, as naked as when she was born, and suddenly realised he was stark naked as well. Claude! What happened? It's just as I warned you. My victory over the Nightmare Ascendant has triggered a massive time paradox, the likes of which the law of causality has never seen. If I were to explain it as simply as possible, time paradoxes caused by regular actions cause the local universe to collapse, and I get recreated without the paradox. Unfortunately, a paradox caused while I'm in the middle of using my time device is quite a different matter entirely. In the latter case, the paradox will propagate through all of space-time via the open time device, and cause the entire space-time continuum to collapse. So far, I've been jumping back in time and causing small-scale paradoxes to delete certain universes, remake new ones with better outcomes. You can consider myself a demolition woman who travels throughout time and blows up unwanted realities, while leaving the good realities untouched. Unfortunately, this latest demolition didn't quite go as planned. Instead of just blowing up a single building, you could say, I accidentally blew up the entire universe. This is why relying on my powers to magically fix problems is a bad idea, Captain. Didn't I warn you about this already? Yeah, that sounds bad, like really bad, but the only reason why you went along with it was because there's a way to fix it, right? <laughs> I guess you could say that. Don't worry, Claude's come up with a brilliant plan to prevent the end of existence as we know it. Shields gingerly grimaced as Claude's hands wrapped between his legs, all the while explaining with a carefree grin that the very fabric of reality was splitting apart at the seams. And that would be... <laughs> First, isn't it time for the captain to live up to his side of the bargain? Hmm, Claude's confidence is sinking. I think she would bear all in front of the captain and he wouldn't even bother to take a few polite squeezes. Fan service is the only thing poor Claude has going for her. 
You can't take that away too. <laughs> Oi, you can't just tell me the space-time continuum is going to collapse and then expect me to stay calm. Captain, do you trust me? Trust? Do you believe that Claude can fix this? Can you count on Claude's word? Well, yeah. I trust your word. You've always been a member of my family. And honestly, I, I have to thank you for even getting the chance to do over my past. If you hadn't been here, I would have had to just live with letting the Liberation Day massacre happen. I owe you my life. If, if you hadn't used your power, we'd all be dead. So, yes, I trust you, Claude. Ah, Captain, my heart flutters at your words of appreciation. Truly the efforts of this pure and innocent maiden have paid off. Pure maiden, yeah. Hm, <laughs> you're thinking bad thoughts about your patron goddess, aren't you? Shields sighed as Claude playfully twisted and jerked his equipment. Pure, innocent, look, if you expect me to believe that, I would suggest you get your hands off my balls first. <laughs> I can't help it. You're floating butt naked in front of me, after all. Oh, Captain, that magnificent length, that impressive girth. Truly, you possess the cannon rod of the stars. Shields let out a breath, but for some reason he felt inclined to believe Claude had a way out of this latest mess. <sighs> so what is this place, anyways? Claude wrapped her fingers around it but continued her work as she lazily explained the situation. Eh, yeah, little pocket of subspace I reserve for some time alone. I've frozen time everywhere else so you don't have to worry about the universe unravelling for now. We could literally make love here for the rest of eternity if that's what you want. In fact, the space-time continuum will be safe if I just hold time forever while we populate this realm with our offspring. Well, that would just cause a whole new set of issues. I guess you'd want to venture off and save everyone again, though. I guess that's just part of who you are. By the way, I've always liked that part about you, Captain. So, seriously, tell me you're going to fix this. Hmm, impatient men aren't popular with the girls. Claude bent down. <laughs> I might have to flag this last one as uh, adult only. I'll, I'll see how bad it gets. Claude bent down and gave the tip of his new ro of his now rock-hard rod a kiss. Hmm, your words are all business, but you'll see your body is ready. She wrapped her lips around it and gave it a suck. Ignoring the fact he was floating in subspace with the space-time continuum about to collapse, he would say that Claude definitely appeared ready and able to deliver quite an exquisite blowjob, but that was clearly here nor there. Oh, Claude, this is hardly... Relax, Captain, relax. I'll send you off on your little mission to save existence as we know it soon enough. But right now, it's time for you to serve your goddess. I'm not going to use my god powers for any schmuck. Only the faithful shall receive. Oh, for crying... He pulled himself up. All right, all right. That's only assuming there is a tonight. So what's the big plan to save the day? Well, you had to ruin the mood. Oh well. With a snap of a finger, the come on Claude's face vanished. And now such tricks didn't even make Shields flinch. Hmm. <laughs> you hoping I would keep the come on? Or perhaps wipe it off with my fingers and put it in my mouth? Uh, no. Hmm. Anyways, here, you'll need this. A small stopwatch materialised in Claude's palm and she handed it to Shields. <laughs> Ta-da! I prevent you TikTok version 3.0. Your key to becoming a Time Lord. W what? It's really simple to use. You see the gear running across the outside of the device, rotate clockwise to speed things up, or counterclockwise to slow things down, and then put things in reverse. You mean this... This tiny thing is the Time Device? Mm, of course not, Captain. The real deal's hidden away somewhere in subspace where nobody would ever find it. That little gadget's simply a remote control. Of course, the Time Device can be used for a lot of other applications aside from just fast-forwarding or rewinding time, but this should be enough for a beginner. Once you get the hang of it, you'll figure out all the other tricks. Eventually. And why are you giving this to me? To travel back in time and prevent the ta paradox from occurring, of course. Meanwhile, Claude will stay here to keep this universe frozen so the paradox doesn't spread to the others. Wait a minute. Who knows how long it'll take for me to do that? I can't just leave you here. Oh, Captain. Did you forget you're a time traveller now? Doesn't matter if your mission takes a day, a month, a year, or a century. After you're done, just jump back to this time frame, pick me back up. From my point of view, it'll be gone for a few seconds, even if years have gone by from your point of view. Oh. Yeah, right, I guess I can do that now. He wrapped his fingers around the time device. Any hints on how to prevent the paradox? Afraid not. Everything's in your hands from this point on. I'm sure you'll be able to figure out the rest. After all, you are practically playing on god mode if you can control the flow of time. If something goes wrong, just rewind time. Leap to another universe. I'm sure you'll do fine. Something tells me this isn't going to be as easy as Claude's suggesting. But I don't have a choice. This is the only way to prevent all of existence from ending. Oh, one more thing. If you run into myself, <laughs> you'll take good care of her, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> as expected of our captain, taking responsibility is a man's duty. 
Good luck with your mission! With another snap of her fingers, their clothes reappeared. Alright. Don't worry. I'll be back in a flash. Claude leaned in and pressed her lips against his. That one's for luck. Yeah. Shields reached for the remote. Then, I'll be seeing you. Claude smiled. Because today's Claude's lucky day. With a grin, he spun it counterclockwise. For the record, I do genuinely like this song. So yeah, sorry about the rather large black box that I suspect I had to put over that, but... For the record, apparently somebody did re-upload something I'd done to some Russian porn site or other. I was, I was informed this by a friend of mine, and I have no idea where the hell he was looking, you know, how the hell he found that. But, uh, whatever. Yes, I suspect there's still going to be post creditsy stuff. Nearly a decade had passed since he became a time traveller, and Shields was still no close to resolving the paradox. The past had proved far more difficult to change than anticipated, and Shields soon realised that while he could use his power to observe and manipulate others into acting for him, he couldn't take matters into his own hands without risking tearing the fabric of reality a second time. He finally understood the weight of Claude's awesome power. He was near omnipotent, able to observe anything, move anywhere, do anything, but every use of his power had to be carefully planned out we would bring about certain doom, not only for himself but for all life as he knew it. After nearly a decade of research, he'd finally devised a plan to avert the end of existence. But first he needed a partner who understood the nature of time travel, but was not a time god herself, yet. He travelled through millennia of history in search for her. He dug into top secret Ruvian ar archives and manipulated technologists who wielded powers beyond what his past self could have imagined. But the shields of today was different. He was, for all intents and purposes, immortal and timeless. He existed everywhere and yet existed nowhere, even with the most powerful of the shards with mid-toddlers in his eyes playing around with toys. His research led him to a derelict space station in the edges of the Ruvian Empire, nearly 3,000 years before Shield's former time. He materialised inside and came upon an old, dusty lab, and a woman's voice cried out, Who's... who's there? Shields emerged from the shadows. I am Kato Shields. I have come from the future. Claude Trillio, I need your help. Claude's secret ending, Time Lord. Congratulations, Captain. You could just got the best ending in the game. What? You thought you were on the Akari route? Oh, Captain, you're the worst. Doing this, uh, that, the uh, poor old Claude, and they're just throwing her away the instant you've finished with her. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any more hints. Yeah, sorry. You'll definitely play my route first the next game. <laughs> I knew you would be reasonable, Captain. Well, I guess I can give away this much. If you want to see a different outcome... Find a way to interrupt Alice before she takes over Chikara's body for the first time during the kidnapping attempt. That's all the help I'm going to give. Good luck, Captain. And that was the secret Claude route. I'll be kind of curious to see if you're putting the smut patch back on, which I had to take off because Steam, or uh, because YouTube, rather, you know, actually adds anything there. It probably doesn't, but I'd be curious to see if it does. But uh, either way... That's an excellent point to end this, uh, yep, this Let's Play in general, and say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in future videos. <laughs>